you're a very unusual person, there will probably be a lot of other people who feel strongly about the idea. The second thing that's incredibly important is to have a very, very good script. And that means a script that is eloquent, both visually and in terms of the words that the characters say, a script that's succinct, that is economical in its storytelling. It doesn't go on for too long. It doesn't bore people. A script that has surprises and twists and turns. It doesn't fall into stereotypes or predictable outcomes. There are, there are delightful surprises in it. I particularly like to be surprised because I see a lot of movies and I always think I can guess the ending. So if you surprise me in your storytelling, I am particularly delighted because I think I'm really tough to fool. I think I always know how a story is going to turn out. So when I get surprised, I'm so happy. I don't know how you feel, but I'm, I'm guessing there are in, in this audience who feel the same. Um, and then you have to know who you're making the movie for and have a sense of how you're going to get that movie out into the world. And certainly a very legitimate, a very good way to um, share your movie with the world is through film festivals, um, particularly if you're a starting out filmmaker. And even if you're quite an advanced filmmaker, a film festival is a great place to get um, to get a sense of how the movie will play in front of audiences. And if you've made a very good movie to start to get good reviews that you can use for the marketing of the movie. And often, if you show your, your movie at a film festival, there was pay money to acquire those movies. Sometimes they don't pay money and they enter into a partnership with you and when the movie makes money they pay you money but in any case you want your your movie to be seen so that is um film festivals are a great way to get your movie out into the world and i i believe that there are different film festivals that are appropriate for different films um most recently I was in Australia. I work a lot internationally. I tend to go to other countries to make movies. My next film is going to not be in another country for the first time in Los Angeles, and it's about Los Angeles. It's a um, female friendship story. It is Yara Shahidi, who is the star of the television show. Uh, And now, I don't know if you received those shows. She's a wonderful actress. Um, she's done both film and television. She's most known for television. She's about 22 years old, and she'll be fantastic in the role. And we'll be, um, as I said, shooting in Los Angeles. I am concurrently finishing a film that I made in Australia on the Gold Coast of Australia about um, Jessica Watson, who was the 16 year old girl who sailed a sailboat around the world without ever touching land. One for 10 months, over the period of 10 months back in 2010. And she left Australia as a pariah. Everybody doubted her, nobody liked her. They thought she was too young to do it and they thought her parents were foolish. When she returned 10 months later, having survived being knocked down on the open sea and nearly killed twice by huge, huge storms and waves, there were 80,000 people waiting for her at the Sydney Opera House, cheering her on and welcoming her home. And she was declared a national hero. So, um, I've completed that movie, but there are 450 minutes in the film because we shot some of it on the open ocean. And in some cases, we used visual effects to create the appearance of the ocean. So we used a giant gimbal on a stand moving a boat that was a fake boat. We threw water on it. And then later through visual effects, we added in the water through CG animation. 
um, and that process is ongoing and will be ongoing until the beginning of September. We stopped, we finished shooting last October and we've been working on visual effects and the finishing of the film. And we have a song, it's a very Australian film, uh, an Australian pop star, star just recorded a song for us um, to be our credits it will be released in January of 2023 by Netflix. Um, and that's me. I have a company. I, my, my personal company is Storefront Pictures, as Michael mentioned. My company with two other partners is called Resonate Entertainment, and it's located in Los Angeles. We have an office in West Hollywood. Um, due to COVID, we don't go in every day, but we go into the office at least twice a week, and the rest of the time we're interacting the way you and I are right now on um, Zoom calls or Google Meets. And um, we develop films that are um, very much focused on female audience, um, of the female audience, but all of our films are inclusive of the male audience as well. We just, our first and primary audience are women because we think that women are underserved. So that's me. Um, now I wanna hear um, a bit about you. Um, I would like to um, know if you, I don't have a sense of sort of what level of filmmakers you are. I'm assuming that there's a, there are a variety of levels and that your questions will be specific to where you are in your filmmaking stage. And I'm very interested in what you see. So I can. With the things that we can get going. Michael, are you there? Or if you want Sorry, to put, I'm, uh, I'm here. I'm just having a bit of connection okay. problem. I'm here. Okay. Well, I can also do it through chat. Um, if the, if the chat is available, um, if anybody has any questions um, for me, I'll I'll continue to talk until a question appears. I got my. I, there's nobody in my family who's in the movie business. I, I came from a small town in Arizona. Uh, my father was an architect. My mother was a social worker. They had nothing to do with the movie business or entertainment, but I was always in love with storytelling. So I studied theater in, as an undergraduate at UCLA. And then I went to New York University um, and I studied writing. And I really do believe that great storytelling begins with the script. So it was important to me to study writing. My first job was at a talent agency that represented writers, directors, and um, a few actors, but mostly writers and directors. And um, that was a very interesting experience because it was a talent agency that was formed by immigrants um, who had come over from Europe as refugees. And they um, started their agency long ago in the 1940s. And um, so many of the clients were people from other countries, which was very, very interesting to me because they were bringing their storytelling knowledge and their stories, which were interesting and diverse to the, to the table. Then after that, I took a job. I, I went to graduate school. I took a little break. And then I got a job after working as a script and book reader for 20th Century Fox. I was asked if I wanted to be an executive. So I moved to Los Angeles and I became a junior executive at Fox. I stayed at 20th Century Fox for 10 years and I made many different movies um, there, about 20 movies. And those movies include um, the um, dramas like Nell starring Jodie Foster and Come See the Paradise, which was a story of the Japanese internment during World War II, which is a disgraceful period for the United States, um, to For the Boys starring Bette Midler and um, French Kiss starring um, Meg Ryan and also Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which was a low budget movie that spawned a billion dollar television franchise that is now being remade into another 
um, TV series um, right now, even as we speak, it's being rebooted. Um, I also made movies like Truth About Cats and Dogs, um, romantic comedies. Um, I got to make a lot of different movies. I also developed the first um, the first rap musical <laughs> before people knew what rap music was. It was the very, very early, late 80s, early 90s. That movie didn't get made, but I had a lot of fun developing it because it was a learning experience. And um, then I decided that I wanted to be a producer. So I left the movie studio business and I formed a company for three very, very successful television creators. They created the TV show Home Improvement and also had created uh, the Roseanne show and had worked together on the Cosby show. And they had a lot of uh, power, but they'd never made movies. So I formed a company for them using their um, they, their money and I developed a series of films and was able to make them as a producer and still receive a paycheck which was a very nice thing um, and I did that for seven years and that's when I made What Women Want for Paramount Pictures and I made Where the Heart Is for 20th Century Fox that movie starred Natalie Portman these are old movies now they're 20 years Old. I also developed a movie called Mistress of Spices with uh, the director Grinder Chada, who was actually born in Africa um, and lives in London now. Um, and Mistress of Spices was a story of ma magic realism. It was an immigration story that takes place in Berkeley, California, Oakland, California, actually. And it starred the Indian actress Ashwarya Rai. And, um, and then from there, um, the, my bosses decided they didn't want to be in the movie business anymore and they closed their doors and so I was on my own and I, I hung up my own shingle that's an expression that means I opened my own business and I became a producer on my own and I've been producing movies ever since and I've worked for Disney I've worked for Warner Brothers I made a movie called No Reservations that was a remake of a German romantic comedy that starred Catherine Zeta-Jones. Um, I made a movie called The Duff, which is a teen movie for, for a company called CBS Films. Um, and, and I've done, you know, all, all kinds of movies. Um, and that's me. I don't know if we have any questions yet, Michael, do we? Uh, yeah, we have. Dare we that raised this? Continue. Okay. Well, I, that's, that's, so that's me. I come from a family of five kids. I'm the oldest of five. I think the oldest child is sometimes the bossiest. And I'd say that that's a really important, uh, not the bossiness, but the ability to organize everybody is one of my biggest and most powerful skills as a producer, because you do a lot of organizing as a producer. You. skills but we um where is the where's the message show everyone message got it um there it is it's so great you worked with natalie portman she's an amazing actress <laughs> um we don't have the experience on how we should tell our stories so it's great that we've met you well i, w I just want to say that um I watch, I, I'm a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. That's the, the body, the organization that um, that created the, Oscar, the Academy Awards at the Oscars. And as part of the Academy, we have the opportunity to see films, in, uh, international films, and, um, and judge an international film as the best international film. So I see films from Africa all the time and and from specific African countries and I am often blown away by the storytelling um, obviously the stories are very different from filmmaker to filmmaker and from country to country um, but I'm, very, I'm very well aware that there are 
beautiful stories coming out of Africa and um, and that there are very there's a very rich storytelling tradition that comes first from the spoken word and now through media and uh, to the rest of the world. So I want to encourage everybody who's on this call, uh, who's, who's telling stories, telling stories through film and video and um, smartphones um, and on paper uh, to continue to tell stories that the rest of the world and Hollywood is interested in what you have to say and there's a place for you and um, there's an important place for you and you know our experiences and our lives and our day-to-day -day may be different but we have more similarities than differences and those differences make the storytelling much more interesting than if we were exactly the same so um, I understand that a lack of experience or in some cases perhaps a fear of the unknown you can can become a barrier to entry or um, a concern and I'm interested in knowing sort of where those concerns are because I'd love to answer questions um, um, Delete, uh, and I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly, this class is on producing and the role of a producer in film. Um, Delete asked, um, what's the title of the class? Because um, I wanted to focus on what we get to learn about. So it's about the role of a producer and the producer is the person who puts the movie together. You may direct the film, but and if you're the person who directed the film and you put the movie together, you're both the director and the producer. You may be the writer. If you organized how the movie was going to get um, put together and how it was going to be filmed and you got people to come on board to make the movie, you're the producer too. And then perhaps you're, being a producer is the only job that you have and you're the person who put the movie together. The producer is the person who puts the movie together. So Mansoor, and again, apologies if I mispronounce names. Um, how do we organize a rule for, for organizing the story? Like what's the sequence, etc.? That's a really good question. Um, and there are a lot of different opinions about storytelling. I think that you know, you can't, I, I can't oversimplify, nor can I go into very, very deep um, specific things about writing because this isn't a writing class. A, that there isn't any one way to tell a story. I think that in the first five minutes, first of all, I think you have to have an idea of what a story is about. You have to have a sense of what what the beginning and middle and end are going to be, particularly if it's a short film. Um, and then I think you have to decide on tone and genre of the movie. And by genre, I mean, is it a comedy? Is it a tragedy? Isn't it a, an absurd piece? Is it, a, is it in the realm of magical realism? It does do things, what is, because the genre determines what your deal is with the audience and when i say what the deal is i i mean in the first two to three minutes when you tell a story on screen you kind of make a deal with the audience and the deal is this is the kind of movie this is going to be if it's a comedy it's this movie is going to be really funny and how do you let them know that you probably have something really funny happen in the first 30 seconds to minute of the movie um this is going to be a scary movie maybe you have something very eerie or the the look of the film is eerie um this is going to be a movie where ordinary real life rules don't um apply magic will happen you might have something ethereal or strange or dreamlike or ghost-like happen in the, in the first few minutes. Now that you've established what the movie is, you have to see the story through in a way that's real and logical to the story. And I guess the other hope, you know, just reducing this down to the simplest version of how to tell a story is, I hope you have a character 
or perhaps a group of characters who we want to follow because we're intrigued by them. Not because they're perfect, but maybe because they're flawed or interesting or have a problem that needs to be solved by the end of the story. So that's my very simplistic overview of storytelling. Um, but in terms of organizing the, the script, I'm gonna say the very basics are, it should have a beginning, a middle and an end. The beginning should set up the deal with the audience, meaning what kind of movie is this gonna be? What can I expect experientially? The middle of the story should take us through um, some sort of problem or complication um, for the central character or characters and, and bring it to a, a peak of action or humor or complexity. And then the ending should wind it up in a way that is, I hope for me, surprising. I'm sorry, I didn't hear, somebody just said something, but I didn't hear what they said. So, so in concluding the story, try to do something that's interesting, surprising, and satisfying to you. And if it's satisfying to you as a filmmaker, it'll probably be satisfying to an audience as well. Um, Ebenezer asks, as a producer, how do you choose the movie you're going to produce? What are your main concerns? The money it would generate or the story it tells? Um, I never am driven by the money it would generate. I am always driven by the, um, my sense of connection to it and whether I'm the right producer for it. But I'm in a privileged position because I've been producing for a very long time now. I've been producing for over 20 years and for the um, 12 years before that, I was an executive and I was running a film company. So I've had the opportunity to establish a reputation and make choices that are um, that, that, that allow me to make choices as opposed to just um, embarking on whatever um, appears before me. I'm often invited into projects that are partially created. For example, on True Spirit, the sailing movie I just told you about, there was another producer on the movie named Deborah Martin Chase, who is one of the most esteemed African-American producers in Hollywood. Deborah Martin Chase had brought the movie to Netflix um, because she discovered the, the writer-director and thought it was a really good story. And they said, okay, Deborah, it's time to go to Australia. And she said, I can't. And the reason she couldn't is that she's making the television show, The Equalizer, starring Queen Latifah in New York City. And she's required to be on the set for that movie. So she invited me and Netflix invited me to come on to that movie and to go to Australia with the director and to develop the script further to budget the movie and to make the movie. So in this case, I did not find the idea. I was invited onto the movie and I did it um, in partnership. And Deborah stayed in New York and worked with Queen Latifah on the TV show, The Equalizer. And I was in Australia making the movie and we talked by phone and I'd let her know what was going on. And she'd tell me how she was doing with Queen Latifah and both projects got made, but sometimes sometimes we work in partnership. So in that case, that was offered to me. In the case of What Women Want, that was an idea that I developed from a one-line project. In the case of the movie that I'm about to make this fall called Sitting in Bars with Kate, which is a, a female friendship story that has a lot of baking involved. Um, somebody who's a friend of mine said to me, at a screenwriter's mentoring workshop said, I know somebody who lived a story that should be a movie. And then she told me what the story was. And I went, hmm, that does sound like a movie. So I met the person who it happened to. And she said, you know, I'd really like to write it. And I said, okay, write a treatment. A treatment is about a 10 page um, 
essay of what the story will be when it's a screenplay. She wrote that treatment for me, 10 pages of what the story would be. And I said, this is fantastic. Now, would you like to go write the script? And she said, yes. So together with my partners, we, um, we gave her notes and we sent her to write the script. She came back to us with a, a first draft of the script that was fantastic. And we took that script and we brought it to Amazon, which is now a movie studio and a streaming service. The executive who we gave it to at Amazon loved the script and said, we want to make it. So we found a director. Um, the director's name is Trish C. She directed Pitch Perfect 3 and several other movies. Um, and Trish came on board and then we began to cast the movie. So all of this took place over the course of about three and a half, four, four years. And um, I chose to do it because it, when I heard the story, when the person who it happened to told me the story, it moved me. Um, I found it to be a very funny and emotional story. And I thought, if I feel that way about the story, I think the rest of the world will. And so, and I thought, I can imagine this as a film and it would be a lot of fun to go see. And that's how I decided to make that movie. And then I had to figure out how to put the pieces together to move it forward. Um, I'm trying to think if there are, I, every, every movie has its own story. I believe that every movie is its own business and every movie deserves its own business plan. They're, they're probably business majors or um, people who have their masters in business administration. And you know, if you're going to, or people who've started businesses, you know, if you start a business, you put a plan together for that business on paper, you know, what your goals are, um, what the steps are, how much money you need to start up the business. You do the same thing with each individual movie. Every movie is its own business. And the business plan is different, by the way, for every movie, because every movie has a slightly different audience. Every movie probably has a different path, a different um, distributor. Um, every movie has its own set of requirements. So it's, um, it's always an interesting journey. And it's a, a different story. Um, Okay, um, l let's see. Casa Hoon, um, I'm very honored to be part of this huge profile and what we would want. Oh, well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for your kind words about what women want. That was another one when I heard the idea. I said, this is something I've always wondered um, what, the, what, what men think. And I know from the men that I know, that most men are very, very mystified by what women are thinking. So I thought this is a universal idea. I think that people all over the world will enjoy the concept of this. And um, I thought when it came to casting, we needed to cast somebody who had a little bit of the devil in, in him, somebody who was not just a nice guy, somebody who seemed a little bit, um, I don't know, uh, like they were a bit naughty. And so, um, that is what led us to casting Mel Gibson in the story. Um, so, um, let's see, Mansoor, uh, which skills are necessary, mandatory, when we're a producer? Like, do we have to know about camera, like a camera operator, how to direct the movie, like a director, or what, and the requirements to be a good movie producer? Such a great, great question. Thank you for asking that question. I believe that as a producer, it is great to know a little bit at least about every aspect of filmmaking. I don't think you have to be a professional camera operator or uh, director of photography, but to know a little bit about lenses, to know a little bit about framing, uh, to know a little bit about, um, even if you're a painter, you know, to know about composition and color and um, have a sense of what makes a beautiful shot. Um, and these are all things that you can 
read about, learn about. On, you know, there are many, many YouTube tutorials and mm -hmm. many good books about it. No. But you don't have to become a professional because part of your job as a producer is to assemble professionals and then support them in their ability to carry out their jobs. Um, and so I think the more you know, the better. I think if you have studied acting, which I have, um, you have empathy for the actors and you can support the director um, as the director is working with the actors in a compassionate way and help them get the best performance out of the actors without interfering. You just know um, what what's required, quiet on the set when, you know, an actor's trying to do something emotional. Some of this is not, you know, it's um, common sense, but some of it really helps if you have studied. So any opportunity you have to learn about all the various aspects of filmmaking, all the components, please do. Um, but don't think that you have to know in order to go forward and tell your story. You can always find somebody with a little more experience than you, and you can learn as you make the movie. And I, I would say one of the most important things, especially as a beginning producer or a producer who has some areas of knowledge um, that are not as strong, is to never be ashamed to ask questions and never be ashamed to say what you don't know and never be ashamed to be ignorant of some, uh, something because we all have pockets of ignorance and it's our ability to be humble and ask to learn that opens up doors and makes people want to teach you and gives you the opportunity to learn. Um, you have to balance that with being confident that you have the skills and you have the instincts to tell stories and you have the right to tell stories so there is always a balance of being humble and being strong and being determined and having the self-confidence to be able to tell stories so um, I think that um, to be a mo good movie producer you do have to be able to recognize a good story it's very helpful to be able to recognize um, good storytelling and good script writing. And it's also very important to be able to be a people person and to be able to assemble a team of complementary um, skills and skill levels and energies. So every movie I make doesn't have 100% super, super experienced people. I always try to have different levels of experience so that the, in the areas where that makes sense. For example, if I'm doing a musical, I know I need a super, super experienced director of photography who knows how to photograph music and dance. It's gonna be more complicated. Um, the the photography is gonna be more complicated than another movie. If I'm doing a small drama, I might be able to take a chance on a newer director of photography. Um, if I'm um, making a movie that has, is extremely, extremely dependent on great and brilliant and emotional performances, I'd better get a director who has a, a fantastic background getting performances out of actors and I better hire actors because as the producer, you are the CEO of this little business that is your movie. I better make sure that we're hiring actors um, who are um, very able to elicit emotion or if it's a comedy, actors who have a track record in comedy. But you always take chances on newer people and particularly if you're working on a budget, you have to take chances all the time and you just decide where am I gonna spend my money and where am I gonna save my money? Maybe that you're telling a story that doesn't require uh, elaborate costumes. It takes place in the real world. Well, maybe you can take a chance on a costume designer, somebody who really wants to be a costume designer, has a great sense of style, is super organized, but hasn't gotten a lot of credits yet, but is, has the, the requisite required um, qualities that a costume designer should have. 
Um, so you balance. Um, Delete asked, does producing include the money making of the movie? Um, and I'm going to assume that you mean by that the ability to raise the finance that will make the movie go, <laughs> that pays for the making of the movie and possibly the distribution of the movie. Yes, producing includes that. And um, on an independent level, that means going to people who have the money to invest in a movie or crowdfunding through a group of people who have a tiny bit of money and everybody pools their money together so that you can make the, the, the movie. But it does require organizing the finance. In my case, it's often about bringing the right project to the right company or combining the right company with some individual investors and, and finding a partnership and creating a partnership. AMT Malaku, how do we organize our story when we write the script? Is there any rule for organizing the story? Well, stories are told in all different ways, um, but I strongly recommend if you're writing, um, even if you're writing a short screenplay to do an outline. I, and if that's frightening or daunting to you, I would say start with your idea, put your idea on paper, then figure out what your beginning, your middle and your end is of the movie. Even if you don't stick with that beginning, middle and end, it gives you a roadmap that gets you started and breaks things down into bite-sized pieces. Then start jotting ideas about what could happen in the first part, the second part and the third part. Then if you're writing a full length screenplay, if you're writing a, a, an hour and a half or over an hour long, uh, a, a 90, let's say a 90 minute feature film, I would say I, I would probably sketch out about 50 scenes, um, maybe between 40 and 50 major scenes that involve the characters of the story and take you through the storytelling process. And each scene should be entertaining. Each scene should move the story along. Each scene should be necessary to the plot um, progressing and going forward. And that's just a very basic way to break the story down. If when we call that writing 40 steps or 50 steps, a step sheet, some people prefer to write a treatment. I mentioned the treatment before, earlier. Uh, when I talked about the um, the beginnings of the movie that I'm making this fall called Sitting in Bars with Kate, I asked the, the person who the story happened to, who wanted to write the screenplay, to write a 10-page um, storytelling, like a short story, a 10-page short story version of what had happened to her in the way that she would imagine it to be as a screenplay. And that 10 pages then became her roadmap for writing the full-length screenplay, which was 100 pages, ultimately. Um, uh, Alula asks, usually a producer should have filmmaking skills. Yes, I think it's good for a, a producer to have filmmaking sk skills. Um, sometimes a producer comes from a business background or has studied some other discipline, history or politics or something else, but wants to make a film, that's okay too. Um, but if you come from another area and you don't have a storytelling background in theater or film, then you would do well to gather a small group of people who become your team who do have that experience. Um, I'm very much in favor of looking at my own areas of ignorance, because we all have them, and finding people who are experts, who I can hire to come support me on a movie that requires the those areas that I don't have experience in. Um, I, I think you should never be ashamed that you don't have experience because that can be fixed very easily. And if you surround yourself with people who you can learn from and who will be supportive of your film, then you're in very, very good shape. Um, a 
Ebenezer asks, what are the odds of you producing a movie from our country if there is a very good script? And I got the idea that you are more interested in making movies that touches um, women's stories. So if you find scripts, good scripts from foreign countries, would you like to produce them? Yes, absolutely. I just made a movie in Australia. Um, I would love to make a movie in Africa. Um, I'm, um, I come from um, Greek immigrants. My grandparents immigrated from Greece on one side of my family, and I'd like to make a movie in Greece. Um, I'd like to make a movie. I, I'd like, I, I, I plan to make two, uh, uh, one movie in India. I'm in partnership with an Indian filmmaker and her husband who's a cinematographer and I've already scouted in India. I'm very interested in work. I've made movies in England. Um, it's easier for me in English speaking countries, but I'm very determined to go to places where I don't speak the language and um, make movies because it is a learning experience and it's interesting and um, for me, it's more fun. I get to meet people from all over the from all over the world. I'm I'm going to be making a movie in Mexico, which I've never done, um, and I've made several movies in Canada. Again, the Canadians speak English. They're culturally different than the USA, and it is, of course, a different country, but they do speak English, so it is a, an advantage. However, I have made a movie in French speaking Canada in Montreal and that that was quite a challenge because most of our crew spoke French and very little English so um, so please know I'm very interested in making movies in um, in Africa and all and I, I feel like there are a great number of American um, producers who are interested it just has to be the right story and if it's not the right story for us and we can assist in some way we're very interested in helping um, emerging filmmakers um, the the key to the, all of this is the story has to be really good and the approach to us has to be professional and um, uh, and understanding of the of the process of uh, uh, let's see Mansour says, is it possible to tell us the fundamentals of producing, like types of producing? Yes, it is. Um, I, I mentioned to you that I'm a creative producer. That's what you call somebody who does what I do, which is see the movie through from inception to completion. I am on set every day. I work very closely with the director, um, sometimes with the actors. I fill the gaps wherever they're needed, but I work with other kinds of producers. One of the other kinds of producers, um, and you'll sometimes see this title, is a line producer. Sometimes the line producer gets a different title, like co-producer. Sometimes the line producer even has a title like executive producer. Um, and the line producer is the technical producer on the movie. The line producer creates the budget and with the help of the first assistant director, um, creates the schedule for the movie. And um, some creative producers also have line producing skills. I have some, but I'm not a line producer and I, I much prefer to work with a super experienced line producer. Line producers um, generally come onto the movie when the movie is officially in prep and begin their duties then. And then they leave the production between two to four weeks after the principal photography wraps. So that's very different from me. I, I am on the movie from the moment of inception or the moment when I'm invited on and I stay through to the distribution of the film. There's also the executive producer of a feature film. The executive producer often owns some part of the underlying rights of the movies um, or in, in the case of Hollywood, sometimes the executive producer is a movie star or is the manager of a movie star and has negotiated that credit but doesn't actually serve a function on the film. Sometimes the executive producer is somebody who has contributed money 
to the production of the movie or the development of the movie in a fairly large amount. So in other words, without that executive producer, this movie never would have come to fruition. And um, so those are in very broad strokes, the kinds of producers that are on movies. Sometimes you'll see an associate producer. Um, generally that is somebody who has been working um, either with the director or the producer and has made themselves indispensable and as a thank you for the incredibly hard work or brilliant work that they've done, they're given that associate producer credit. I'm trying to think of the other um, sort of producers. Co-executive producer falls into the same category as executive producer. And if you are interested in reading more about um, producing credits, you can go to the um, website of the Producers Guild of America, and you can Google Producers Guild of America and look up, do, do a search on the Producers Guild um, website of credits, and they will give you a very, very detailed overview of pr producing credits in feature films, and then separately producing credits in television. They are very, very different in television and feature films. And you can ask me why, but I can't tell you exactly why. It, ha it seems to have something to do with the writer being the leader in television. The executive producers of television shows are most always writers. Sometimes there's a non-writing executive producer, but almost always in partnership with a writing executive producer. And that is the top title that you can have as a producer in television is executive producer. In film, the top title you can have as a producer is just the producer title or produced by. And the Producers Guild puts a stamp on your title that is at, at the end of produced by, it, it says PGA if the Producers Guild has endorsed you as a true producer, as opposed to somebody who just used their money and influence to be able to negotiate a title, which sometimes happens in Hollywood. That's why you see so many credits. But generally, there are only about three or four real producers on a movie, sometimes just one or two. Um, let's take a few more questions. Um, as a producer, what's the extent um, or limit of changing the narratives, especially at the time of editing. I'm always confused when producers ask to change the narrative structure of the directors at the final editing. What is the limit of the producer's cut? Oh, such a good question. You guys have amazing, amazing questions and you've obviously been through some filmmaking, I can tell, um, <laughs> because these are, these are problems in Hollywood as well as um, where you sit, you know, it's, um, it's an ongoing conversation. First of all, um, the producer's cut and the director's cut are negotiated contractually, at least in Hollywood they are. Um, and so the limitations of what you can and can't do should be in the contract that you have with the financier. Sometimes the financier holds the right to make changes to the final version of the movie through the editing. And that, that this uh, ability to make changes, you probably know is called um, having final cut. And having final cut is a big honor and a big responsibility. Um, almost always a financier will want to have the ability to change the cut of the film. Um, sometimes, if a filmmaker is a very, very high status um, creatively and artistically, they can command final cut. They get final cut. And that means nobody can mess with their movie. Um, the um, distributor or financier has certain ways to try to manipulate the filmmaker into doing what they want, including threatening them that they won't distribute the film in the way that the director wants, a variety of other things. 
Um, occasionally the producer also has final cut or shares final cut either with the director or with the studio. Um, it's in everybody's best interest to start the process knowing what the movie is that you want to make. And also creating a system by which decisions will be made. I'm very much in favor if there is going to be a vote for which way to go creatively, that there be an uneven number of people voting so that you never have a tie. If there is going to be a tie, it would be a very good idea to decide who the tiebreaker might be and to elect perhaps a neutral party, somebody who's a great filmmaker who doesn't know any of the other people involved in making the film. That's something you can sometimes negotiate. Changing the narrative dramatically at the end of the making of the movie is never advisable because you know, you're ideally you're shooting the movie that you want to make and you're doing it in such a way that it can be put together beautifully. Occasionally a movie doesn't work and you have to change the storytelling methodology. You have to add voiceover, for example, um, or narration because something isn't under stories of this kind who have a generosity of spirit and who want to help and who the director and filmmakers respect to come in and give some notes and then to collectively come to a decision about how to address those notes in a way that's economically feasible for this particular movie. Sometimes there are several creative ideas. One of the things that I like to do is um, work with the editor and the director to try out in a kind of sketch form, different ways to fix the movie. And when I, when I say sketch form, what I like to do is do a recut of the film that's just a temporary recut. And where we don't actually have the footage, put in cards or um, if you can't do a animatics, and animatics can be done very inexpensively with, a, with an app, but um, then put in photographs of um, storyboards of where you would like to go with the storytelling. Have people voice the story storyboards and add a little music underneath so it adds to the flow of the storytelling. You can get a pretty good sense of whether you're going to solve the storytelling problem by using animatics or storyboards cut into the movie. And you can try out a few different solutions very inexpensively before you go back to do a full recut or reshoot. So, um, you know, try to get on the same page, try to figure out how you're going to solve problems if you bump into problems. Try to identify what those problems might be ahead of time. That's actually one of your most important jobs as a producer and be prepared for them as best you can. Um, how can we reach you? How can, can you drop us your email so we can talk to you more about our projects? My time is very limited because I'm working on two movies right now, and I do <coughs> like to um, uh, volunteer my time to help emerging filmmakers. I would have to respectfully ask you to do that through this film program um, and through Thomas and Michael. Um, just because the the volume of uh, approaches that I get um, from people who I don't know who are looking for my assistance is very large. I, I probably receive, you know, um, five to ten emails a day from people who are looking from he for help. Some of them I can't help. Um, I try to answer all those questions, but it's better if you come through um, this program because I can, um, if I can't help you, then I can refer you to somebody else who can, and it'll be a more efficient process. Um, do, does every movie have to have a producer, Mansoor asks. 
like when we're making a short documentary or advertisement for a specific organization, I think every movie um, and every um, piece of film benefits hugely from having a producer. And sometimes that producer is also the director. Sometimes that producer is also the writer. Sometimes that producer is al also the financier. You can wear two hats, but I think that somebody should take the responsibility for being the producer, say they are the producer, or share that responsibility with somebody else, work with the junior producer, so that there's a center, central organization for whatever it is that you're doing. You see what I mean? Because if every movie, if every piece of film is its own little business and you're this and the producer is the CEO, it's very helpful to have um, somebody to turn to who is responsible for that, that for the information and for um, the, 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 the direction of the business. And the director can uh, the director should not be um, solely burdened with that. I think because if you want a piece of film to turn out well, you want the director to be focused on performance and the execution creatively of what the movie is going to be. The director is in essence the artistic director of the of the the business, you know, whereas the producer is the CEO and ha should have oversight of all those things. So if you are a director and you are producing, I would also have a producing partner working with you. Even, even if they have less knowledge, if you have the knowledge of what a producer does and you can delegate some of the duties to them, you'll do a better job directing. It won't be as distracting. So how are we doing for time? And um, I'm sure I haven't covered all the questions that you have. I can see from the questions here that there is, um, there, there, there are, um, there, there's a desire by some of the filmmakers who've attended this panel to reach out to be um, making movies globally, to come to Hollywood and to, to work in Hollywood. And what I would say is the best stepping stone to that is to make movies locally that are really well made in terms of storytelling and artistry. So I would encourage you as filmmakers to identify the talent that's close by and um, and work together, form your own filmmaking collectives and tell great stories. It doesn't matter if those stories are five minutes long or if they're, you know, it, they're five hours long and a limited television series they can be short or they can be long if they're excellent they will become what we call in Hollywood a calling card and they will become your entree to programs that can bring you over to the United States and participate and bring people from the United States and the Hollywood filmmaking community um, over to you um, to work with you and I think that we should not assume that, please don't assume that African stories are not of interest to us in the US. Um, that's, that's, simply, that's simply not the case. We are interested in telling global stories. We do have uh, in Hollywood an affinity for telling stories that take place in North America. I disagree with that producers who do like to tell stories that are located in North America because we have a very large movie going audience and often uh, we, we tend to be th there are many filmmakers who, who like work in a more provincial way but there are many many adventurous filmmakers um, who are um, interested in what's going on in the rest of the world and there are great stories in Africa that we haven't heard and that we will enjoy hearing. There are cultural differences that make your stories more 
they make them interesting and refresh genres that have grown tired in North America. So um, uh, I think that it's really important to value your own storytelling traditions and find ways to translate them to film where you are and use what you find beautiful and moving where you are so that we can see that in North America. I strongly recommend film festivals, entering your films in, in film festivals um, so that the rest of the world can see them. Enter your films in the Academy um, short film competitions. That's, a, that's an international category. Um, I believe the student films are, and certainly the full length feature films have the international category as well as the um, the the regular um, best picture category, and all of those categories are open to you. Yeah. Um, I am. I, I was asked what movies have I loved that were made in Africa. Many, many movies. Um, there was one that I recently saw, and I'm just totally forgetting. It was a ghost story. Um, about some young women who are um, haunted by the ghosts of their deceased um, boyfriends, and it was they were it was an Academy entry last year. I always see the African films. Um, I don't remember the titles of them, but if you, um, I'll do another seminar with you all and I will go back and just look up the names so that I can rattle them off to you. I've, I've really, really enjoyed um, the African filmmaking and I, I'm particularly, while I watch um, documentary film, I'm particularly interested in narrative film. Um, I've, I've definitely seen documentary, many documentaries that have taken place in Africa, but I'm I'm interested in narrative film because narrative film, um, for me, it is inspiring to me as a filmmaker because the um, the the methods of storytelling and the traditions of storytelling, the African traditions of storytelling, are very much more felt um, when the filmmakers are African and telling stories in um, about Africa. They, those um, traditional storytelling um, methods sort of bubble up and become part of the fabric. And I'm smiling because I so uh, inspiring. And and by the way, I find the same thing um, in very close to uh, in in North America too. In Mexico, for example, um, there are storytelling traditions that seep into the Mexican filmmakers storytelling um, in Mexico in the um, indigenous people in Mexico there is and and also in the European Mexican community there is a there is magic realism as there is in Africa it is a very much a part of everyday life and that's often seeps into the storytelling of Mex certain Mexican filmmakers. And so I often very much enjoy watching filmmakers from Mexico um, tell their stories um, because I get to have, uh, I get inspired, you know, um, by global filmmakers. The same thing in India, the storytelling mm -hmm. techniques of Bollywood and then also independent filmmaking and the way that the various religions in India are in, infuse the culture of filmmaking, um, changes the way that filmmaking is done in India. So it's really interesting to go to India and be on a movie set and see how, how movies are shot and then also watch the finished product and see the um, kinds of liberties that we that Indian filmmakers take with reality that end up becoming very magical and interesting and fun sometimes funny sometimes tragic so that that's my very awkward way of explaining why i like working globally there is inspiration for me 
in all the various methods of storytelling that happen locally as you know before we were doing it on film we were telling stories around campfires you know um we were um we did it in greece we did it we, we still do it in in indigenous populations in africa we still do it in the united states um in the incredibly important part of part of life and so um that's so don't 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 lose track of of your own um culture even if your filmmaking is super sophisticated and maybe sort of more hollywood um you know if you don't try to erase any quirks you may have brought along with you it's it, it'll be part of what makes you distinct um you get to define you know who you are and what your storytelling traditions are um now to be a producer you don't necessarily have to have money i don't come from a rich family <laughs> at all um my uh my parents didn't give me any money to be a producer um you do have to be a super organized person you have to be ambitious um you have to be able to recognize a good story and you have to recognize talent in other people and bring them together to make a movie yeah, and then um, you have to be bold you have to be even if you're a shy person you have to be bold when so, hey so, so is it can you list your best filmmaker in africa no i'm sorry i can't i i'm the, my best yes the uh, high so i just yes, i mean you, michael is that you yeah it's me i've been i've been listening to to what you've been telling us michael, can I you hear me maybe speaking to me yes i am can you hear me is it okay yeah i've been i've been hearing everything that you've been telling us it's been it's been fantastic to hear your um about your experiences and your inputs um and i think some of some of the the members on this uh, on this panel today besides the couple uh, besides the people that already have experience of filming in in film and in, in the industry the rest of us someone like me uh, from what you've said till now, more of the producer role is um, the 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 leader of the orchestra. If for if uh, if I'm correct, that's a, that's a lovely way to say it. Right, this it, it it is the producer is the person that brings drummer, the 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 violinist, and everybody there to 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 make one that one beautiful sound at the end of it. So that is that's absolutely yeah. yeah and then that person the producer doesn't necessarily have to uh come from money or have money or put in money in general he is there or he or she is there the producer is there to organize bring in the right manpower the right thought uh the right people that would that can communicate with each other and bring the story to life so the rest of so basically from the understanding that we have normally from movies that we do over here when we hear the word producer we basically think of a, a financier the person that brings in the money would would be the producer per se so apparently from what you have what i've learned from you today a producer it does not necessarily mean a financier a producer means a person that can link people, the right people, the right ideas together, that can bring those people together, and if possible, get the financier at the same time, uh, and pitch the idea to the financier, and then get the money, and then work based on that. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I am. So, uh, for the rest of us, for the pe for for individuals like me that are not from a uh, film background, could have uh some of an input in in terms of what a producer does and what producing means because uh it's, it, it, there, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect in terms of what we understand as a producer here versus what an actual producer is uh in the industry you know so yeah that, i just wanted to say that for the people well, I, I'm 
Yeah, go on, go on, Susie. Well, the producer also puts together the team in, in the United States. So when I started to put together this next movie that I'm going to do, um, starting September 12th, I had to find uh, the director. The, after the director came on board, I had to find the cinematographer. This director that I'm working with has a cinematographer she likes to work with. Yeah, yeah well, sorry. So it will be that Let me... cinematographer. And I had to find... I, 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 I had to find the production designer who's going to design the sets, the... Um, the person who is going to design the costumes, the person who's going to do the hair and makeup. I organized all of those things as well. So it's it's a combination of sourcing the funding for the production. First of all, making sure the script is ready to be made. Then, then helping organize, you know, who everybody is who's going to work on the movie. And then during the production of the movie, making sure that the production flows in a, in a great way. And then in the post-production of the movie, which is another very important period, um, which w it was pointed out, uh, I forget who it was who, who was talking about um, the, oh, it was Eob, Eob um, who was asking about um, who makes the decisions when, when the producer or somebody wants to recut or reshape the film um the producer should be the one facilitating and making sure that you come to a good conclusion about how to do the final shaping of the movie they should be working in concert with the director who is yeah. creatively leading and make sure that there's a peaceful <laughs> kind of conclusion to the movie so that the movie is the best possible final result because in that post-production process all those finishing touches, the music and the sound and the edit, especially the editing of the movie can make a world of difference as to whether the movie is going to be successful or not. And and also the, all, the way the movie ends up making the audience feel as they finish the movie, the, the, the way they take away the message of the movie or the feeling of the movie is gonna be important. And all of that kind of happens, not just during the shooting, of the movie, but in the finishing of the movie. So the producer becomes important there as well because they have to um, shape that movie. And I'm aware that on smaller movies, people wear multiple hats. The line producer who's doing the technical producing might be the same person as the creative producer, or the director might be producing at the same time. But again, I'm warning if you're a director, Make sure you have somebody helping you, see, so that when you're directing, you can be focused on the artistry of the and of the storytelling um, more than the technical aspects. Um, so, but I think that the um, the metaphor of being an orchestra conductor is um, very good. You know, it's very true, um, and. Uh, you, you do to some degree share that conducting uh, with the director because the director should be creatively leading um, once the movie is shooting and through the uh, editing process you hope um, okay that's uh, so um, that's that's very I think we've come to the end of our time yes we're running out of time as well um susan we I, I mean we really do appreciate you for coming on here and uh and, and and sharing your experience with us and your viewpoints as well i'm sure we would uh, meet down the road again uh and discuss some you know more technical aspects of producing of being a producer and how this great individuals on this um on this panel can come on board i mean could 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 uh, how could they work with the producer or how can they be a producer or in in terms of the in, in terms of them doing their own projects how uh, what type of consider as a producer as well to to bring on board the the let's say the technical part of of the conductor of the orchestra so 
maybe we can do that uh, some s- sometime down the road uh, and i really really appreciate uh you for giving us your time uh thank you so much it's my pleasure and uh, and michael if any individuals want to be in touch would you please um sort of gather the questions that they have and the information and um, talk to Thomas about uh, what uh, what the process should be yes yes uh, oh yes yes I will I, I will definitely take that as a yes yeah I, yes I will definitely do that <laughs> yes I'll definitely do that yeah okay I'm going to say goodbye for now. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. And, and audience, and I wish you all the best with your um, films, and I'm looking forward to seeing Goodbye. Bye. Michael, can I speak? Uh, Andy, wait, hold on. Hello. Uh, yeah, you can, Andy. Hold on. Let me and the girl like go. Ahead, okay. Is that a request? But I'm Harish Mubar. Then, if it's possible, look in the Madi who on the ball of shape who no be met. Ah, Harish, you must think that the Zaru session like question and answer no more. Ma, topic on shape la madrig, but I'm not sure Harish Mubar. Ma, but the shala metal pre declared are by two the lecture of Nagraju. It's be good to be young, not in Kazan, Zarek, 